You have to listen to this. This is not me telling you you should. You have to listen to this. You have to just once. Take the take the 21 minutes. Take the 21 minutes and listen to the CP. Hello and welcome back to the Album Book Club. I'm here with Stephen Day. We're gonna be doing something really fun. Last time uh, we did the blind react together. I had Stephen listen to one of Cosmo Pike's EPs and he loved it. And uh, we're actually gonna both blind listen to his newest EP that he released back this April. So without further ado, we're gonna get right into the first song. Let's do it. It went in a different direction than I thought his music would go. Because yeah. what we just listened to in the last one was from 2017. And this is, you know, seven years later. Yeah. It's, it's a big gap. And I kind of like the way his sound developed over time. And it's a different direction than I thought it would go. But I think this is great. Yeah. I actually usually spoken word is something for me where, like, you have to do it right. People like Kendrick Lamar do it right, I think. And I think it's done right here. It's a different sort of vibe. It's really weird drawing a comparison between this and Kendrick, uh, especially for, in terms of a spoken word. It's complete because it's completely different the way that it's done. But my comparison that I'm drawing is in how well it is done in reference to the style of the song and or the style yeah. of like the mu like music in general or just like the project all around. See, the reason this sounds so different is because the style behind it is so different. Like the musicality behind this is so different from what Kendrick puts out. Even though it's the same kind of style of spoken word and it's both done really well, they sound drastically different. But that's part of doing it good. You know, changing it to your specific sounds so that it benefits you, yes. that's part of doing it good. And um, Cosmo Pike just does it really well. Yeah, this was stellar, man. I mean, this is easily an 8.75 for me. Uh, yeah, it's a solid 8.5 for me. It's pretty long, but it makes sense for the song, mm -hmm. so. And it's it's the perfect kind of vibe to be this long, too. Yeah. Like, when you're in this kind of mood where this music is really appealing to you, it's, you know, this somber kind of feel, you're down for longer songs. All right, well, let's get into the next one and see what we're, what we're missing out on. Damn, that's good. <laughs> oh my god, we gotta talk about the guitar at the end. Cause nah, for real, we we gotta talk about that shit. We, we, I need a debrief. Uh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh my okay. goodness. This next song is called Blow, and oh, he brought back what I thought was gone. <laughs> uh, what I was kind of missing from that last EP was that kind of funky, like, kind of brass sound. Yeah. And. Oh, it's back in full swing here, and it's done so well. Oh my god, the brass is done so well. This song feels like if instruments grew hands, and they could reach inside of your noggin and just massage your brain. Yep, it is a full brain massage. This is nice. And the guitar at the end, it's singing. It's it really great is. singing. It's simple, but it is... It's beautiful work. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful guitar work. And like, oh goodness. Everything's just so deeply buried in the pocket. I mean, there's no way you're getting this band out of the pocket. Mm -hmm. It's so impressive because they make it sound easy and it's not. Yeah, <laughs> at all. None of this shit it is, is easy. not. It's like, yeah, that note shape and you know, that pattern is easy, but play it like that. It feels like the drunken master of playing. Yeah, it's the tone is so nice. It's oh so effortless, God. dude. It like, how are you that good, <laughs> dude? I I don't think I've ever been this. Jealous. I'm glazing for real. Like, I'm I'm gonna continue to glaze this album too because this is some albums an EP or EP. My bad. But More than likely. Oh, uh -huh, you're stupid. Album. Nine. I think it deserves it. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, it deserves a nine. That's, That's a nine. really good. Especially after the last one. Like that last one, almost peak. This one, it fixed what I was missing. Well, I'm busting what down. is you doing? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> 
hated how in sync it was with mine. So, I should start off by saying that I did not expect this to be a kind of a country song. I was about to say it has a twang. I was I was very thrown off by it. Country at the drum beat, country everything essentially. Yeah, it has a twang. But also, I don't really mind it, and it's only because he does it so damn well. I don't I don't understand how someone can switch between uh, styles with such like ease. And the thing about it is that it is distinctly Cosmopike. Oh yeah, it's still him. It's his sound. It's just, it's got this twang. And yeah. it's like, I would have never expected a twang from you, nope. but it sounds good. But uh, we're glazing though. No, we are glazing. But this is proving that like, if you are a talented enough artist, you can really hop between any style and make it yours. This is a perfect example of that. And the song is fun. Even though it's pretty mellow, it's still a lot of fun to listen to. The drum beat kind of keeps it going, just like a country song would. It's just the, you know, the two, four. I liked it, I, I liked it enough to give it a seven, five. I'm gonna Ooh. give this one a solid eight, bro. I like the exploration here. Yeah, the exploration of one's own sound is something that not a lot of artists do. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people find their genre or their niche, or not niche, niche, and just stay there. So I like when people, you know, and kind of expand out into other genres or take things for other genres and implement it in their own music like Cosmo's done here. 100%. Let's go on the sex playlist. Not your sex playlist. I'm making one for this. Full Diddy. That one is one you lay down and die to. Oh yeah. You are laid down flat on the ground sobbing. This song is called Over and Over, by the way. And uh, I don't know if you picked up on it, but that twang that we heard in the last song, it goes back just a little bit in like that swing yeah. of the guitar. And that was such a nice little touch. That's such a nice little cherry on top to like end out and finish it. What a good ending song to an EP. 100%. Again, with his EPs and having like good wind down endings even though you can't really wind down from this one because it's kind of slow from start to bottom uh even the windy kind of picked it up a little bit and so did uh what was the first one the second one low low yeah those two kind of picked it up but this one definitely finished it yeah man this song was just great through and through this is a very good relaxing song like you just had a stressful day at work and like I need to blow off some steam and just sit down for a minute. You put this on. Such a good decompression song. Yeah, just like sink into your own world and just be for a minute. Yeah, this, this is, is the great. sinking into the beanbag chair feeling. Dude, yes. Like it you is. just kind of meld with your surroundings the, and you just be. Yes, the perfect song for that. I, I think, I, I can't imagine a better song for doing something like that. I think it deserves a 9.5. I'm gonna give it a 9.75. Absolutely beautiful. I, I think especially for this to be one of the like, not B-sides, but like one of the not highlighted albums, or sorry, what not one of the highlighted songs on this EP um, is wild. It's absolutely wild. This song is the best one on the EP. Yeah. Like you, you have to, like, you have to listen to this. This is not me telling you you should. You have to listen to this. Yeah, it's, you have to just once. Take the take the twenty one minutes. Experience. Take the twenty one minutes and listen to the EP. Low EP by Cosmo. By please listen to it. That's beautiful. This, this is art. Truly, yeah. I can't agree with that. Like I can't recommend this anymore. And also, I do want to point out something funny in the last video. His music was uh, labeled as alternative rap. Now it is labeled as alternative folk. And I think that's interesting because yeah. it's taking that spoken word into more of a poetic thing instead yeah. of uh, what we were used to seeing it as like, and we were comparing it to kind of Kendrick. I think we need to compare a little bit more to like poeticism here. And also the writing in these songs is good. Well, that's kind of how Kendrick does it too. He writes yeah. all of his songs essentially as poems. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we were drawing so many comparisons to Kendrick. Yeah. 
I think it's kind of why, the, too. We make the same comparisons. Like, this is a poetic album. Yeah. You know, we're comparing... We're comparing him to, like, one of the greatest artists. So, you know. a Pulitzer Prize winning poet. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, a pretty, it's a pretty good thing when you're being compared to people like that. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that brings us to the end here. Sadly. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far through, I've been playing with a binder clip for the last 30 seconds. Uh, and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and uh, check out our other videos. We go live at 8.30 approximately every Friday night, uh, Eastern Standard Time.